Hello everyone, my name is Anoop and welcome to the series of videos on the supplemental course material for mechanics of materials EGM 3520. This series of videos is uh, an attempt from mechanical and aerospace engineering departments or this is a new program that uh, our department has come up with is to let the PhD students to record some video lectures uh, on the topic of their choice and these videos will basically be useful uh, for undergraduate students in order to learn the basic concepts and solve some problems. So the course I have chosen is mechanics of materials but this can be easily uh, or this can also be useful for students taking uh, engineering statics. I think it's e EML 2511 uh, because I am going to talk about centroids of composite areas, I am going to talk about moment of inertia and I am also going to talk about parallaxis theorem. So this series is broken down into three, uh, three parts and first part is centroids of composite area and this segment is pretty short, it should not take more than 10 to 15 minutes for you to watch. So let's get started with this centroids of composite areas. So as all of me uh, may know that a centroid of an area is just a geometric center of an object or of an area and to give you an example as shown in the figure one we have a circle and all of us know that center of the circle is essentially its centroid represented by point C here. <coughs> in many cases uh, uh, we try to make use of the lines of symmetries in order to locate the centroids and depending upon which shape or which area you are looking at, it may have one or more lines of symmetry. Uh, to give you an example, consider a semicircle as shown in figure 2 where the horizontal dashed line is nothing but the line of symmetry and in this case, the centroid of the semicircle lies somewhere along this horizontal line of symmetry. If we have a case of rectangle as shown in figure 3, we have two lines of symmetry one is vertical and second is horizontal. If an object or area has two lines of symmetries, then the point of intersection essentially represents the centroid of an object. In this case, this point C is centroid of the rectangle. Now all of these shapes, circle, semicircle, rectangle or even triangle, parabola, all of these shapes are called as standard shapes or simple shapes because for these shapes, we have, uh, there are already established formulae in order to calculate the locations of the centroid and these uh, standard formulae can be easily found out in the textbook. Just to give you an example, let's go to the document camera where this is in the back cover of mechanics of materials textbook. You can see that uh, they have listed the centroids for triangle, quarter-circle, semi-circle and you can see what are the locations of centroid X bar and Y bar and you can also find what is the area. So the, there are quite a few areas here which again as I said we consider these areas as standard areas because we know the formulas to determine the locations of the centroid. If we go back to the PowerPoint presentation again, one step ahead of simple areas are composite areas and these composite areas are nothing but two or more simple shaped objects which are combined together. So to give you an example, you must have seen this I section very often. Uh, it consists of three rectangles which are combined together. This is another example of a composite area which is formed by combining a quarter circle, a rectangle and a triangle. Now in order to find the centroid of composite area, we use these two formulae which are x bar and y bar equal to these two equations here x bar and y bar essentially represent the x and y coordinates of the center of the entire composite area and they are obviously measured with respect to some reference with respect to some coordinate system. In order to explain these terms here x i tilde and y i tilde, let us consider this example uh, in which case this L section which is essentially a composite area consisting of two rectangles, one is blue rectangle and other is green rectangle. Uh, these two areas combine together to form a composite area and x1 tilde represents or let's say x1 tilde and x2 tilde, these are the distances of the centroid, oh sorry let me go to, okay so 
x1 tilde and x2 tilde are basically the x coordinates of the center of the blue rectangle which is this distance x1 tilde and x2 tilde is oh come on view and x2 tilde is basically the x coordinate of the center of the green rectangle. Similarly, y1 tilde and y2 tilde are the y coordinates of the centroids of blue rectangle and green rectangle. You should notice that all of these distances are being measured with respect to the origin. Now, in order to find a center of an center of any area, we follow certain steps and I have just listed all of these steps in this particular slide. And to explain each step, let us take an example of an inverted T section. So, step 1 is uh, to find or to identify if the section consists of any line of symmetry. So, in this particular case, we can see that this particular vertical line divides the T section or divides the inverted T section into two parts which are mirror images of each other, which essentially means that this vertical line is a line of symmetry. And since this is a line of symmetry, we know the centroid will lie somewhere along this vertical line. Second step is to choose a convenient coordinate system because as I mentioned in this particular slide that the distances x1, x1 tilde, y1 tilde and all of the other distances, they are being measured with respect to origin. So we need to have a coordinate system to work with. So in this particular example, I have a coordinate system with x passing through the base and y is the line so that it matches or it is along the line of symmetry. The third is we have to divide a composite area, in this case this inverted T rectangle into simple areas. Again simple area is what we know, what we can easily figure out from this figure is this T beam is formed, T section is formed by joining two rectangle, one is blue and other is green. So divide the composite area into simple shapes. And fourth step is to locate the centroid of these simple shapes. So we have to locate or we need to find how far the centroid of this blue rectangle is from origin and how far centroid of this green rectangle from the origin. So we need to find what is x1 tilde, y1 tilde, what is x2 tilde, y2 tilde. As I explained previously, y axis is line of symmetry so we know that centroid will be somewhere, centroid will lie somewhere along this vertical line or y axis. Now as far as y1 tilde and y2 tilde are considered, y1 tilde is y coordinate of the center of this blue rectangle with respect to origin. So if this is 10, the center will be at half the distance which is 5 and for this top rectangle which is green rectangle, this is 30 millimeters in height. Uh, I'm sorry I did not mention all of these dimensions are in millimeter. So if this green rectangle is 30 millimeters in height, the center will be located at a distance of 15 millimeter. This is 15 millimeter, but as I said, since we are measuring all the distances from origin, we will have 10 plus 15 which gives you 25 millimeter as y2 tilde. So what we have identified is we have found the locations of the centroid of these simple shapes. The next step is to tabulate your results and uh, making a table that I has that I have shown in this particular slide is generally a good practice because it makes your solution look clean and neat and also it causes less confusion to a person who is seeing your solution, for example your professor or TA who is grading the, your exam or homework. So in this particular table what you are going to write is first you will write what is a shape, by shape uh, I am talking about the simple shapes uh, that a composite here is made up of. In this particular case we have a lower rectangle which is blue and upper rectangle which is green. Then we find the individual areas of the two rectangles. So lower rectangle is 40 into 40 millimeter wide and 10 millimeter in height so total area is 400. Then upper rectangle similarly is 10 is the width and 30 is the height so 300 millimeters. Uh, as I said the y axis is line of symmetry so the locations xi tilde for lower and upper rectangle will be 0 because the x coordinate is 0 if you have a line of action passing through the y axis. The distances 5 and 25, I just explained them here in the previous slide. So these two results are just taken and the values are written under the y, yi tilde. The next column is the product of xi into ai which is the location of the centroid, x coordinate of the centroid into the area. 
So here 0 into 400 is 0. The last column is yi into ai, which is multiplication of 5 into 400, which is 2000. So this is for lower rectangle. We repeat the same procedure for the upper rectangle. And this basically completes the table. The only remaining things that we need to enter here are, are the summations. Because if you look at these formula, we have summation of xi into ai divided by summation of area. And y bar is given by summation of yi into ai divided by ai. So we need to sum the areas which is summation of AI, which is 400 plus 300, 700. And we need to add the product of XI into AI. So we add 0 plus 0 is 0. And 2,000 plus 7,500 gives you 9,500. So once you know these three numbers, you can uh, easily calculate the locations of X bar and Y bar. Again, let me, uh, let me tell you, X bar and Y bar are the locations of centroid of this entire composite section. In our case, the x bar comes out to be 0 millimeter, which is expected because we have line of action passing through y axis. Whereas y bar, which is the y coordinate of the centroid, is located at 13.5 millimeter. So we are going to measure 13.5 millimeter from the origin. So we go up by 13.5. And this red dot at 13.5 denotes the location of centroid of this inverted T section. Now, as I explained four steps and then something about this table. So in order to get hang of this procedure, let's do another example, uh, in which case the composite section is made up of a quarter circle, which is indicated by blue, a rectangle, which is indicated in green, and a triangle, which is indicated in gray. So let's start with uh, the steps that I mentioned. The first step was to see if there are any lines of symmetry. Uh, if you see this shape, no, there is not a single symmetry that we can determine. So st step one is not that useful in this particular case. Step two is to have a coordinate system. In this case, I have chosen a coordinate system such that x-axis passes through the base, whereas y-axis passes through the left edge of the rectangle. The third step was to divide this composite shape into three uh, simple shapes, which are identified here by three different colors. And then step four is to locate the individual centroids of the simple areas. So we need to find what is the location of x1 tilde, y1 tilde, x2 tilde, y2 tilde, and x3 tilde, y3 tilde. Once you know that, we will make a table. And in this particular table, you will notice that xi tilde for quarter circle is uh, in red, I'm not sure if you can see it in the, uh, in the video, but this is highlighted in red because xi tilde for the quarter circle, which is the centroid, x coordinate of the centroid of quarter circle is negative. It is minus 0 0.848. This is expected because the quarter circle is on the left hand side of the y axis. Therefore, the distance x1 tilde will be negative. So this is negative sign. This is you should pay attention to these, uh, these signs because, again, this, is, this comes from the fact that we measure all the distances with respect to origin. So don't get confused with the negative signs. Even if x bar tilde is negative, you will see that all the areas are positive. And this is generally the case uh, in case of centroids. Areas, can be po areas are always positive, but the distances can be negative or positive. Again, one other, the other thing that, that should be noticed is xi tilde is 4r over 3 pi. And this formula for centroid of the quarter circle is basically uh, given in the textbook, any statics or mechanics of materials textbook. You will have the list of the standard formulae for centroids. Then we find xi tilde, y tilde. Then we take product of xi into ai. We take product of y into ai. We repeat the procedure for the rectangle and then for the triangle and then fill this table. We take the summation of all the areas, which is sigma ai, which is 21.14. We take summation of xi tilde into ai, which is 39.34. And similarly, we do it for yi tilde into ai. We plug these three numbers in these two, in these two equations. And we find that x bar is 2 feet, and y bar is 1.86 feet. Again, x bar and y bar are the locations of center of this entire composite area. So 
uh, in order to locate it here, x bar is 2 feet. So we go 2 feet from the origin. And then we go i bar equal to 1.86. So we, we go 1.86 up. So this particular point is somewhere, or that particular point denotes the location of centroid of this composite area. So this is basically the story of uh, story about the composite, its composite area and how to find the centroids. And this basically ends the se uh, segment one of this series. In the next video, we are going to talk about moment of inertia, and then we are also going to talk about parallax theorem. Uh, do watch next two videos, and thank you for watching this video.